we're going to do exercise 9.1, which will lead us through learning objective number two. And let's see what we have. A schedule of expected cash collections. Peak sales for Northern Lift, a wholesale distributor of snow shovels, occur in November. The company's sales budget for the fourth quarter, showing these peak sales, is given below. And here we have budgeted sales, all on account, for October, November, December, and a total. From past experience, the company has learned that 25% of a month's sales are collected in the month of sale, another 70% are collected in the month following sale, and the remaining 5% are collected in the second month following sale. Bad debts are negligible and can be ignored. August sales totaled 70000 Look what we're being given here. We're given sales for August, and we're given sales for September. September sales totaled one hundred eighty. We're asked to determine, in, for what's required, prepare a schedule of expected cash collections from sales by month and in total for the third quarter. So we have sales for August and sales for September. Hmm, I wonder what that means. So, well, let's go through it nice and slow and see what we have. First of all, we're going to need our head, headlines, October, November, and December, and we're going to need a total column. And the first thing we want to deal with is accounts receivable. So we're going to put accounts receivable, but for what month? What are we doing here? Well, the question tells us that 25% of sales are collected in the first month, 70% are collected in the following month, 5% are collected in the third month. And I always like to write this little thing on top when I'm doing these things so that I don't get confused. So let's just look at October first. 25% of sales will be collected in October, 70% of October sales will be collected in November, and 5% will be collected in December. So that means if we go backwards one month to September, 25% was collected in September, 70% of September's must be collected in October, and 5 in November. So that means if we go back to August, 25% of August sales were collected in August, 70% were collected in September, and 5% will be collected in October. Since it's collected over three months, for this 5 to line up with October, the 70 has to line up with September, the 25 with August, which means we have to go back to August to get the accounts receivable. So we're going to collect some accounts receivable from August sales. August sales were 70,000 and we're told that we collect 5% in the third month or in the second month after the month, which means we will collect $3,500 in October related to sales that occurred in August. We also have to go back to September. So how are September sales are going to be collected? Well, 25% of September sales were collected in September. 70% will be collected in October. September sales were 180,000, so 126,000 will be collected in October, with 5% or 9,000 being collected in November. So we've done accounts receivable for August, accounts receivable for September, now we're ready to do October. So October sales, 25% of October sales will be collected in October. October sales are 400,000, so we will collect 100,000 of October sales in October. We will collect 70% of that or 280,000 of those sales in November and we will collect 20,000 in December and if we total across here we will get $400,000 which is October sales. Then we have November sales. 25% of November sales will be collected in November and November sales, 800,000, so 25% are 200,000. 70% will be collected in December. With the balance, I'm going to put one more heading over here. We don't have to, but I always like to do it. Accounts receivable. So we've collected 760, so there's still another 40,000 that needs to be collected. I'll put that under the column accounts receivable. If we add across here, we're going to collect 760,000 of the 800,000, with 40,000 being brought forward at the end of the year as an accounts receivable. Then we have our December sales. 
And for December, 25% of December sales will be collected in December. December is 700,000. So we'll collect 175,000 in December for a total of 175 in our total column, which means there's 625,000 that we won't collect. So we can total our accounts receivable to 665,000. I always do it, even though we're not being asked to do it. I always do it because if you're going through all of the budgets, at some point you're going to need the accounts receivable ending balance for the end of the quarter. So let's add our totals together and see what we get. We have 3,500 across here, and we have 135,000 in this total. So we're ready to add them up. We will collect $261,000 in October. Even though we sell $400,000, we'll only be collecting two hundred and sixty-one. dollars We will be collecting $489,000 in November. Even though we sell eight hundred, dollars we'll only be collecting four hundred and eighty-nine. dollars And in December, we're going to collect $755,000. We sell $700,000. We're going to collect seven fifty-five, dollars which is even higher than that number. And that is our schedule of expected cash collections. You'll notice that I left this out. You'll have to fill that in. Now the second part of this question asks, assume that the company will prepare a budgeted balance sheet as of September 30th. Compute the accounts receivable as of that date. Well, now let's be careful here. It's asking us what accounts receivable will be as of September 30th. September 30th. So it's not asking what our accounts receivable are at the end of the year, it's asking what they'll be as of September 30th. Well, we've already seen that our accounts receivable as of September 30th will be the sum of these three amounts here, which equals $138,500. So there's $3,500 still outstanding from August sales as of the end of September. And there's 135,000 outstanding as of the end of September for September sales. So it's 138,5. That's as of September 30th. If it asked us what our accounts receivable were as of December 31st, this is what we already did over here, $665,000. And even though this was not required in the question, look what I'm doing. It doesn't take much for me to fill in this little column. And especially if you have a spreadsheet, it doesn't take much. So that if you have to answer that question for December 31st, it answers itself. Always be prepared, right? There we go. 9.1. Exercise 9.2, a sales and production budget. Let's read what we have here. The marketing department of Grabber Corporation has submitted the following sales forecast for the upcoming fiscal year. And we can see it. Uh, on the screen here in my spreadsheet. Sales in units for the four quarters and I've added a total column. Continuing on, the selling price of the company's product is $22 per unit. Management expects to collect 75% of sales in the quarter in which the sales are made and 20% in the following quarter. And 5% of sales are expected to be uncollectible. <clears throat> the beginning balance of accounts receivable, all of which is expected to be collected in the first quarter, is 66000 so just a note at this point, it does not appear that in constructing the accounts receivable for the end of the year that we will include the extra 5% that, that is uncollectible. We will assume that it's just uncollectible and leave it out of accounts receivable since all of the accounts receivable is collectible in the quarter. It must have already accounted for the 5%. So we can just ignore that. That's just extra information that may confuse us, but we'll ignore that. The company expects to start the first quarter with 3,200 units in finished goods inventory. Management desires an ending finished goods inventory in each quarter equal to 20% of the next quarter's budgeted sales. The desired ending finished goods inventory for the fourth quarter is 3,400 units. Required, number one, prepare the company's sales budget and schedule of expected cash collections. Okay, so on the screen here, we have our sales in units. And remember, the sales budget is very quick. It's three lines. It's our sales in units multiplied by the selling price for sales in dollars. So what is the selling price that we were given? The textbook tells us it's $22. So the nice thing about the spreadsheet is we don't have to keep writing. We could just drag that straight across. This becomes a sum. So with just the 16,000, sorry, not a sum, multiplication, 16,000 times the $22 for 352,000 in that quarter. 
Drag that across. There's our sales budget done. Isn't that beautiful? Look how quick that was. Now you may say, well, that's not all that needs to be done, right? No, it's not. We have to do the schedule of cash collections. What we have here for quarter one, two, three, four is a sales budget based on an accrual basis. In other words, we will realize in quarter one a level of sales of $352,000. That does not mean we'll collect $352,000. That's what the next part is about. So, before we get into it, notice what I do up here in the corner is I write the terms of our accounts receivable, how we expect to collect it so I don't get confused. 75, um, 25, and actually I did that wrong. Let me change that to 75, 20. 75, 20 with 5% uncollectible. So the first thing we need to deal with before we get into quarter one is what will we collect in quarter one from previous quarter sales? We're told the accounts receivable beginning balance is 66,000 and we'll collect it all in quarter one. 66,000. Now we worry about quarter one sales. How do we deal with that? Well, we're gonna collect 75% of quarter one sales in quarter one. So we're going to collect this times 0.75. There you go. $264,000 will be collected of quarter one sales in quarter one. 20% of it will be collected in quarter two. So we just move sideways under the quarter two column. And in this cell, we will enter 20% of quarter one sales. And that gives us quarter one done. We're ready to move on to quarter two. Well, quarter two sales is 75% of quarter two that we collect in quarter two. 20% of it we will collect in quarter three. So it's just a matter of entering the, uh, the, the formulas within Excel. Uh, in quarter three, we will collect 75% of quarter three sales and 20% in quarter four. And finally, in quarter four, we will collect 75% of quarter four's sales with the balance being an accounts payable. Now, do we include 25% in the accounts payable or only 20%? Because we only collected 75%. This could be a little bit tricky if a question came up that said, what's the accounts receivable ending balance? One might say, well, it should be 25% because the uncollectible amount won't be uncollected until next year. It should be matched in that year. But there may be a policy in place of taking 5% off of sales as an allowance for bad debts anyways. The clue we got was that the accounts payable forward balance of 66000 was all collectible and collected in quarter one. So we made no adjustment for bad debts to accounts receivable. So that means the adjustment must have been made before it entered accounts receivable you would only enter 20% of December sales into accounts receivable. So now we're ready to do our summation and I'll move up and click on the sum button and highlight which, whoops, highlight which, uh, which cells that I want to um, sum. Let me try that again. Doing things this way can sometimes cause problems. There we go, 66. And we just drag all the way down and we total every column as well and we can drag that all the way across. There's our schedule of cash collections. Number two, we're not done the question. There's another part to the question. Let's have a look at that. Number two, prepare the company's production budget for the upcoming fiscal year. So we need to prepare the production budget. So we need our sales in units. Well, our sales in units are just what we had up here. So all we'll do is just copy the cells over rather than entering everything in. And there we go. From that, we have to add our desired ending inventory, what we want to end the year with. And we're told that we want to end, uh, sorry, end each quarter with 20% of sales of the next quarter. So we'll just multiply by 0.2 of the next period. Now, why didn't I just enter 3,000? Here's why. And this is, has nothing to do with managerial accounting. It has more to do with working with Excel. Whenever possible, 
use cells and formulas whenever possible. Here's why. Because if you make a change in one place, it will cascade throughout the entire spreadsheet that referred back to that cell or that used that cell in any other place. So always take the extra step. Even though we knew it was 3,000, we could have entered 3,000. Always take the extra step and do that. Now what we can do is simply just drag across the next two columns. See how easy that is rather than entering each number? To ensure that we've done it right, 2,800 is 20% of 14,000 and 3,000 is 20% uh, of 15,000. For the desired ending inventory for the year, we have to refer to the text and it says we would like to end the year with 3,400 units in ending inventory. So we do have to enter that in. Now, over here, what do we do for the year? Well, you can't sum across. The first item, 60,000, is our sales and units for the year. We want to add to that what we want to end the year with in ending inventory. So that is just 3,400. So don't fall into the trap of thinking, well, this number is the sum of these four. So the second entry must be the sum of these four. It is not. So you can't just drag the cells down and hope that works. You have to just understand that your ending inventory for the fourth quarter is also your ending inventory for the year. So now we're in a position where we could just uh, sum the two, uh, the two items to get our total needs. And that you can sum right across because this last column, you're just adding the two numbers, right? Less our beginning inventory. We do start the year with something and we're told that we started the year with 3,200 units. That we have to enter in. But the rest is simply just the previous ending inventory. And for that, we can drag that straight across. So what do we enter here? We have our total needs for the year of 63,400, less our beginning inventory. That is our beginning inventory from the beginning of the year, which is 3,200. And then finally, in this column, we simply and we can drag that straight across. And there is our production budget. And note before I go, careful with that last column here. This is not a, this is the column, I should re-enter a title above it, is for the year. You cannot just sum across the four quarters all the way down. You have to be careful. The desired ending inventory is the ending inventory for the fourth quarter. The beginning inventory is the beginning in the inventory from the first quarter. So be very careful with that. That is all of 9.2. Thank you.